Very good, very good morning to all of you. Uh, we will start this in another two, three minutes. Yes, uh, good morning to all the participants. Good morning from JICA and Niti Aayog. Uh, this is the forum on which we discuss uh, the best practices and the important part of this forum is that some of the best practices are from India and some of the expert opinion and best practices are from other part of the world. So uh, this is generally very educative. We have had this kind of forum in different sectors. And this time, in the next two hours, we will take up uh, agriculture sector. So uh, may I request uh, Ms. Yumiki Onishi uh, from JICA project to start the proceeding. so much sir thank you so much uh, and good morning uh, to everyone uh, welcome back to fourth uh, japan india sdg forum uh, this time we are on uh, agriculture uh, titled promoting Agri agriculture for local development and again uh, my name is yumi onishi i'm the core team leader for the jica team for the aspirational district um, we are very happy to have you here and as uh, mr ranjan has uh, given you a brief uh, we are having a set of presentation today, and uh, we also have a panel discussion that will follow. So uh, just to give you a, a little summary of what's happening today, uh, we'll have our opening remarks from uh, Mr. Rakesh Ranjan and Dr. Niyam uh, Patel. And we also have uh, a small presentation from our uh, colleague. Uh, highlighting some of the key issues in the agriculture sector, which will set for today's um, subsequent presentations. And we have two presentations from a Japanese expert in JICA, uh, followed by one of the presentations from uh, Indian entity, IDC. And based on these presentations, we'll have a, a panel discussion with some of the distinguished uh, uh, individuals from the Indian agriculture sector. So I hope this will be a, a fruitful learning for everyone today. And before uh, moving to the uh, presentation, I want to introduce uh, Mr. Rakesh Ranjan from Niti Aayog and also Dr. Niran Patel, who heads the agriculture sector. 
So um, I will first request uh, Mr. Ranjan to uh, deliver the opening remarks, and then we'll move on to uh, Dr. Patel. Please, sir. Yeah, um, friends, uh, once again, uh, good morning. See, the whole point about the aspirational district program is that it must do two work at least. It must imbibe knowledge from other places, and it must bring out certain practices, certain products, which we can, from Niti Aayog and from JICA Forum, we can tell the whole of the uh, uh, whole of the India that uh, something of this nature was uh, attempted, was tried, and was implemented in aspirational districts, which are generally a tough district, more tough than other districts in India. And our argument would be that if this can be implemented in, in aspirational district, then it can be implemented in other parts of the country as well. One of the panelists, before I introduce Dr. Neelam Patel, who is my senior colleague here in Niti Aayog, uh, we have in today's presentation from Niti Aayog side, I had requested the Mr. Vijay uh, Vardhan. He is the general manager of operation of ITC. He has been working with this program for quite some time, for quite some time. And one of the initial surveys that with, which he did in the district was an eye opener for most of us. The, it was eye opener because many of the best practices, which are kind of which are, which are supposed to be implemented in many of the districts, the arrangement that is there in the districts are very much deficient. The government of India has an arrangement through the Kusivikyan KVK, through which these services, these best practices, these are supposed to be mainstreamed and taken to the farmers. But when it came to the survey and when these, uh, it, there was a survey in some 18,000 farmers, and when the result of the survey came, then we realized that the awareness of the program and of the good practices of agriculture is rather low in many places. So there are many challenges. The first challenge is to identify the best practice which suits the agroclimatic condition of that place. And the second one is that what to do and how to do that a farmer adopts it. Now, I can take you back to the debate. There was a very big debate on this regard in 1960, when a large number of economists or from all over the world had come and had said that in Indian agriculture sector, the price mechanism and the modern system of uh, the incentive doesn't work. This was the initial uh, thought process of 1950s and 60s. And it was felt that you have to go to farmer and cajole him and to tell him or tell her that you have to adopt these practices. But later on, work of some of the important Indian uh, agriculture economists proved beyond any doubt in the 1970s that the incentive system and the market-based incentive system worked in Indian agriculture as well as it can work in the industry. And the normal agriculture, normal, normal farmer is as capable of taking a good economic decision if he or she finds it more profitable for them. And that is where the hope lies, that if we are talking to a sector where what we are trying to demonstrate is something which is beneficial to the farmer, and beneficial means doesn't mean simply that it is higher production. It simply it also means that what is the return that a farmer gets from his, from his labor? What is the return that is there from his field? So if this, is, this can be demonstrated, then there is absolutely no reason why it cannot be adopted. And if it is not adopted, then it is the work of the district administration and especially the agriculture department to see that what exactly is the missing link, that something is there, the farmer also know it is quite, is, is quite, quite good, but they are not still adopting, not because they are irrational, because some ingredient, something must be missing out of there. So, we have presentation from the JICA uh, side, which will tell us the cases of Kenya, and which is also, there is a very interesting presentation on one village, one product, which rhymes with our own uh, 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 call given by the Prime Minister of India that uh, one district, one product. And in good number of districts, the product comes from the agriculture sector. So, 
what i would urge from this uh, before i invite my senior colleague is that please participate and uh, note down the important part of it and in the end the second panel where we have two district magistrates we would request them to kind of tell us the gap which exists in implementing some of the best practices in the sense that suppose there exists a best practice suppose that best practice is shown to people then what exactly is the gap how do people go about it and how do they kind of implement it uh, dr neelam patel is uh, uh, my senior here she heads the agriculture division of niti ayog she uh, works under uh, dr ramesh chand who is the member and uh, she is on forefront of most of the agriculture led policies in this country she is by profession agriculture scientist she will introduce herself uh, she has a lot of knowledge on the um, on on the inputs that goes into the agriculture she has a lot of knowledge and field experience of uh, working with the extension workers in agriculture and see that she is basically a practical person so uh, without much ado i would kind of invite her to uh, give her the address yes ma'am good morning uh, thank you uh, rakesh ji first i would like to compliment jaika and our own team rakesh ranjan ji for uh, inviting me to this forum and the second for planning this workshop to bring the best practices either from the districts from the outside of the country and then we have to test those best practices at the our farmers field and you know uh, this year uh, uh, this agriculture sector has made unprecedented growth, uh, good growth rate and uh, we could uh, uh, get 3.4% of the growth rate in the agriculture sector while the other sectors are either in negative side or they are at the constant but in the agriculture sector is the only sector which could bear the um, shock of this covid 19 and our farmers uh, have provided the good uh, yield good production and uh, therefore we won't have any problem from the agriculture side as per the production goes and uh, if you see that this year contribution of agriculture sector is 20.2% it happened after 17 years so this is the uh, credit goes to all of you and in fact all of uh, we have made very good uh, progress and uh, rakesh ji already covered that during 60s uh, india's condition was different and that time we were food uh, deficit country and we made all efforts to uh, to sustain our population to provide them the adequate food and therefore we brought that green revolution and during the green revolution we made attempt to provide the breeder seed good agriculture this uh, irrigation practices then farm mechanization and what happened the impact of agriculture now either we are at number 1 or in some community we are number 2 but uh, what happened this uh, green revolution this uh, uh, we have made uh, good effort to get the to enhance our productivity but how to maintain this productivity now in long term now this is the question so now in place of the green revolution we have to have the ever green green revolution so that we can sustain the food production at a constant pace and the second thing uh, this is the whatever the product production that we are getting out of agriculture we could not convert that to bring the uh, economic sustainability and also the livelihood improvement of the farmers so therefore to think that uh, this uh, rakesh ji already covered that honorable prime minister announced that uh, one district one product so that uh, we can complete the total value chain means from production to consumption and to support the farmers we have made several initiatives in the thing of if you can see the uh, Im- improvement in the soil health through uh, to introduce this soil health card scheme and you know that our uh, this indian soils are deficient in the organic carbon and arg- organic carbon is one of the indicator to show the health of the soil so the currently our soils are having the organic carbon in the range of 0.4 to 0.5% but for the agriculture sustainability they should have at least 1.5% and the second thing if we talk about the water 
uh, in during 50s the per capita water availability in the india over 5000 uh, it is it was close to 5300 uh, meter cube per capita per year now it has come down to 1500 uh, meter cube per capita per year so as a country level india is a water stress country and if you see the number of uh, dark zone um, uh, gray zone these are increasing with the time and the, uh, the third challenge that we are having now in agriculture, our land holding size is becoming very small. And the contribution of the farmer is small and marginal farmer, they are in the range of 85 to 86 percent. So with uh, low organic carbon, low level of mechanization, low water availability, and also the uh, small land holding size, and then this number of farmers of under the small and marginal categories increasing with the time. So now how we can make our the, uh, agriculture sustainable, this is the issue. I think with this type of workshop, we can make the intervention in the technological side. If we can uh, uh, bring some technology, uh, technological initiatives, then we can reduce the total cost of the cultivation, which is the early issue in the India. And the second thing that when I, I have gone through this uh, Japanese agriculture, they are very successfully implementing the one village, one product. And I think this the after the uh, one year data we are having of the one uh, district, one product of the India, these are very encouraging. So sir, in future we can think to implement, uh, to experiment this one uh, village, one product also in the uh, in the similar pattern as the Japan is doing in other countries also. And the second thing, sir, uh, the uh, machines, um, particularly which are available, either they are sensor driven or they are the digital machines, that type of machines are required for our small and marginal farmers. So if we can bring some of these the uh, machines and the uh, uh, Vijay Vardhanji will cover that the mechanization is also helping the farmers to reduce the total overall cost of the production at the village level. We are having the mechanization scheme from the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and to support the Indian farmers, we are having several policy initiatives. You start from this soil health card, then Pradhan Mantri Kishi Chai Chai Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, then MSME sector for the processing. Everything we are having uh, this for the credit, uh, we are having this Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Yojana to provide them the credit to the farmers. So therefore, these are the in place, but still we have to uh, uh, do something different to tackle the problems of the small and marginal farmers and particularly in our ADP, is under the, our ADP programs, because these districts are having some uh, challenges and those challenges can be tackled by this type of workshop by bringing some innovation from the JICA side and which can be attempted and tested in our situations. So thank you, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and for the uh, our verticals from in the Niti IO. Sir, we are with you and we can work together to bring some of the innovation in these uh, ADP districts. Thank, thank you, Ranjan Sa, and thank you, Dr. Patel. Um, it was very informative how you described about the Indian agriculture scenario. And uh, I think keeping these things in mind, we can move forward with the presentation. And I'm sure the following presentation will give us some uh, pointer at uh, what we can do to improve the situation here in uh, Indian agriculture. So um, we will be now moving to session one with a, a presentation. And the first presentation is from my colleague, uh, Dr. Umesh Babu, who is an agriculture expert in our JICA project team. Uh, he will be presenting key issues in agriculture sector. Uh, this will give us an idea of how we came up uh, with the, uh, the forum uh, theme today. So, uh, Umesh, over to you. Uh, thank you, Vivalishi. Uh, good morning to all of you. Is my screen is visible to all of you? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, this, uh, this is uh, Dr. Promesh Babu here, uh, me and my colleague and uh, co team leader of this project, Jimmy uh, Konishi, would like to project key issues in agriculture sector today. So, we both are working in this sector uh, since last two years, uh, and also association with Niti Ayog for the uh, under, for to understand the gaps and challenges in agriculture sector to give uh, suggestions and incorporation to the aspirational district programs. 
We are following a reviewing of existing documents and SDGs and ADPs in the last two years and also analyzing the data from Champions of Change, for change portal where uh, district authorities update their data every month of their progress and ADPs development and also conducting online team meeting and surveys with uh, selected DMs and DCs, also officers from agriculture, irrigation and animal management of the selected districts. We also had a consultation with agriculture experts to understand the situations in aspirational district. So we had uh, conducted the three online surveys uh, in aspirational districts so far. Uh, one is from Chitrakhu, Uttar Pradesh, another is from Golpara, Assam, and third is from Nandurbar, Maharashtra. So we have uh, we have uh, summarized our analysis into progress made in the agriculture sector, achievements, and also the gaps and challenges uh, facing by the aspirational districts. So in, uh, let us look into the uh, progress made in the agriculture sector. As Madam already explained, uh, in recent years, Government of India has invested significant amount of funds in agriculture sector to prout out several innovative schemes and programs to support agriculture sector for food production and securing livelihoods. So among them, there are uh, several schemes are there. Among them, so we will highlight here is the doubling of farming income. This is one of the best schemes uh, introduced recently to increase the income of the farmers. And the second is on the soil health card scheme, which is uh, running very nicely. And it is to improve the quality of the soils and also the crop production. A uh, third one is on the Pradhan Mantri Krisi Sinchai Yojana. Here, uh, the benefits will get the subsidies to install the micro irrigation systems to uh, increase their crop production with the minimum water available. Also, on the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, it is also introduced recently uh, by, the, by the government to uh, secure the income of the uh, farmers from any adverse impacts from climate change. And also uh, started uh, and also started linking uh, local mandis to ENAM through the national agriculture market uh, uh, programs to get the price realize better price realization, uh, which is also a uh, uh, transformative in terms of uh, transactions. So also promoting rainbow revolutions like green, white, yellow, and blue revolutions to increase the agricultural uh, production and also secure the uh, farmers dependent on the agriculture system. Through these efforts, considerable changes have been observed in crop diversification, intensification, food production, water conservation, and livelihood generations, particularly in the ADPs. Uh, these are the major progress we have come across in the aspirational district program. And uh, let us look into the achievements. Uh, so far, uh, we have seen uh, in the aspirational districts are performing uh, better in some of the indicators, say, for example, Net soil area under micro irrigation shows positive trend and it is increased by 11.86% in last three years. So we have analyzed data for 2018 and 2021. So we come across that there is an increase in area under micro irrigation that is supported by PMKSY. And second is on the share of net soil area covered under PMFDI, that is Pradhan Mantri Pasar Bhima Yojana. We have also seen some there is improvement in the schemes uh, by 39.4 percent in the curry uh, that means enrollment of farmers and also area covered under the curry crop also seen the uh, enhancement uh, both in uh, Ravi as well Ravi as well also observed 47.07 percent of the increase in the uh, uh, coverage and also enrollment and let us look into the third indicator share of high value crops to the total zone area high value crops generally into the horticulture crops like banana, dragon fruits, and also vegetables, they are also shown a positive trend in the aspirational districts, that is up to 49% uh, in the last three years. Let us look into the graphs. There you can see the percentage in, uh, among uh, 2018 and 2021. In 2018, uh, it was uh, uh, the next one area, like uh, there are four indicators also shown, all are shown positive trend, and they are increasing over days. So also we have seen uh, there is an, a positive change in uh, crop production that is in the major crops both in Ravi and Kari. So we have seen 20 to 25 percent of increase in crop production and also in Kari and also 15 to 20 percent higher production in Ravi in the major crops. Also we have seen uh, as per the uh, e now uh, uh, electronic national agriculture market some of the markets are linked to the 
uh, e now system. So they have shown the positive price realization uh, through uh, uh, transparency in transactions. And also there is a uh, two indicators in animal husbandry, uh, Department of Animal Husbandry. Both are also working well and shown the sub substantive targets and also uh, substantive targets and achieved at in the artificial insemination and also animal vaccination program. These are the major achievements we have come across in the EDPs. Uh, let us look into the, and uh, uh, in the same way, uh, aspirational districts are also uh, coming across the gaps and challenges for, uh, like uh, Madam explained in the uh, previous session. So most of the, we, what we have observed and uh, analyzed, the most of the EDPs in the uh, India are belong to the backward areas and also inhabited by many diverse communities where the developmental programs get relatively slower and also most of the area comes under the undulating terrain their lack of transportation and communication system to provide a doorstep services to the farmers and and also there is an agroclimatic changes regular changes in agroclimatic conditions like droughts and heavy rains are also posing constant threats to agriculture growth and uh, we have seen that uh, there is some uh, subsidy gap in the PMPSY and some of the tribal communities uh, located in the aspirational district programs are uh, not, uh, it is not favorable to them because uh, the higher subsidies and they are not able to uh, affordable to take the uh, installation of this micro irrigation scheme. If we can incorporate this and they will also uh, come into the screen and also the area under this PMPSY will be increased. Uh, very few port storages and boardons are also established and very much very uh, less interest are uh, given to this and also even private uh, partners or private investors are not showing interest on this establishment of port storage and boardons to store the agricultural producers and as we observed those who are linked to the ena i have shown better price realization and we observed uh, very few Mondays are linked to these uh, programs. We can uh, suggest that if we can improve more uh, Mondays to this program, so we will have a better price realization in the future. And uh, we have observed that there is a meager response in rejuvenation of water bodies, particularly under the FGNR EBA program, and also meal production and formation of cooperative societies in the areas. Then local farmers' networks appear weak and are less aware about the scientific marketing systems where we need to concentrate more on. And recently we have observed that there is a crop rate by stray cattle is an instrument and damaging standing crops. This is uh, noticed in national districts. And the recent uh, one of the scheme, uh, important scheme introduced by the government of India, Kisan Credit Card Scheme, is not shown much performance and and not implemented well in all the districts uh, that needs to be concentrated. Uh, and also less fund allocation in particularly in irrigation planning and extension activities under the Department of Animal Husbandry uh, is uh, performing less. And we have observed that there is a lack of uh, stops, particularly in the administrative level and also in the field level which is also affecting the agriculture sector, growth of the agriculture sector, where we need to concentrate on that. And moreover, geo-agroclimatic challenge, geo -geo challenges and also weak economics of the farmers affecting private investment for innovation in EDIs. Uh, these are the major uh, gaps and challenges we have come across in the EDIs. Uh, there is a way forward, uh, we have observed way forward uh, in the EDIs as well. So agriculture is, is still an important and often a main source of livelihood in the areas. Planning and developing key initiatives will benefit the sectors and and the communities depend and large communities depended on agriculture sector. Given the geographical and economic condition in areas, most farmers and the population see that there is a limited opportunities available in the aspirational districts. For that, if the farmers have better understanding of the market, they can respond to the opportunities. These are the levels in your across. And collective efforts of stakeholders are required for identifying and banking and new ideas and opportunities. So these are the way forwards we observed. And the following presentation, particularly from the uh, 
uh, experiences from Japan which are adopted in other parts of the world uh, on these best practices. We'll highlight on these issues and will give us some um, best example for the contextualization in India. Thank you. Uh, dear friends, uh, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, as I said, the importance of this forum is that we get the best practices from other parts of the world, uh, thanks to JICA. Uh, two of the best practices which are being, uh, uh, which are going to be presented right now uh, are pretty interesting. Uh, many of the district magistrates and many of the district teams uh, must have identified or must have a general idea that what is this district good at and which product we can develop, how we can take it because we have to develop not only product from the production point of view but also from the entire destination of the product entire value chain. So uh, we would, had I been in your place, we would see the next two presentation with great interest and ask questions that uh, what has been uh, the experience in other countries in this regard so that we can implement some of the things here. Yes. yes. Thank you, Mr. Ranjan, and thank you, Mesh, for your presentation. And uh, before moving to the next set of presentation, I want to just inform the audience uh, how you can post the questions to our presenters. Uh, we'll be having a Q&A session after each of the presentation hereafter. And I know that the audience are joining us today from the YouTube. So you can post your questions, uh, if any, to the uh, chat box in the YouTube. And when you are posting a question, uh, please make sure that uh, you mention uh, some of the essential things. Uh, one, uh, please mention your name and organization. And two, uh, please include your email address if possible. And uh, in case uh, you are addressing a question to other than the person you are, uh, who's presenting, please uh, clearly mention to whom you're asking the question. And uh, lastly, please uh, mention your question uh, with a simple and concise uh, sentence so that we uh, understand exactly what you are asking. So uh, we would like to move to the next uh, presentation. Uh, which is the SHIP approach by Dr. Jiro Aikawa. Uh, Mr. Aikawa is actually joining us from uh, Bolivia today where he's traveling. I'm not sure if the connection is there with him. Uh, Dr. Aikawa, can you hear us? Are you there? Okay, I think um, his connection has just dropped. We can move on to the next. Uh, Mr. Uchikawa, is it possible for you to uh, go first and do your presentation uh, while we sure. try to re-establish the connection with uh, Dr. Aikawa? Okay, with my pleasure, I'll go ahead. Okay, so uh, let me just inform the audience. Uh, we are moving ahead with uh, another presentation, uh, One Village, One Product. Uh, Mr. Uchikawa is a regional advisor for JICA. Uh, he's joining us from Tokyo today. Uh, he has uh, numerous uh, association with the One Village, One Product movement uh, across the world. So, um, Mr. Uchikawa, please start. Sure. Uh, good, good morning to everyone. And uh, this is my most pleasure to be with you. And uh, uh, I'll start my presentation briefly. But uh, in the beginning of my presentation, let me start my self-introduction. Uh, as might you, uh, you might not know my name, so that's, this is my name, Tomonori Uchikawa, and my occupation is JICA expert for uh, OBOP advisor for Central America. And uh, my hometown, I am from Nagasaki. So first of all, I would like to ask you, some of you, uh, speaking of my hometown, Nagasaki, what do you imagine or what do you know about my hometown? This is my just quiz or questions. Some of you might say, oh, Nagasaki is very recognized for that uh, kind of this picture. Maybe you might say that Nagasaki is very recognized and famous for the atomic bomb area, isn't it? But only that? I don't think so. Nagasaki is still famous for another thing. So. The purpose of my presentation is to learn more about the value of my hometown, Nagasaki. 
just kidding, but another thing is, and to know how to add value for the community with concept of OVOP. So my presentation contents is just two, uh, two things. First one is key concept of OVOP. And the second one is to know or to grasp the socioeconomic impact through OVOP. What we can achieve through the OVOP. Let me show you. The first one, the key concept of the OVOP. What is OVOP? Yeah, some of you, uh, as as she mentioned, that the OVOP is still applied in India, and uh, the OVOP is uh, the concept of the abbreviation of One Village, One Product Movement, which is concept for the local economic development advocated and developed by Dr. Morihiko Hiramatsu, ex-governor of the Oita Prefecture in Japan from 1979 to uh, 2003. And it, this is approach for identification and value addition for the local available resources with local branding. What is that? That the local re resources uh, do not limit only tangible one, but also ap can apply for the intangible one, such as human resources, natural resources, history, tradition, culture, landscape, and so and much more than that. So let me show you what is the value or attractiveness of my hometown Nagasaki. Let me say, speaking of Nagasaki, we can find those things like the sweets, noodle soup, ingredient. Those things are the specialty product, very recognized and very famous in Nagasaki now not only the atomic bomb area, but also we can find more than that, like a port town, night view, churches. Those are the things of the tourism resources, as well as the another things like atomic bomb area. Of course, that is the most famous thing of Nagasaki, but also we have the exorcism, musicians. These are the things of the cultural and the environmental resources, which is behind or which is hidden before, but now we can find out those are the things of the local available resources. And we can find out that OBOP is the identification and value addition for the various resources, not only one product for the community, but also we can vary, vary or the, the diverse the, those uh, resources. So I can say that OBOP is the promotion of the local branding, not only for the one product by one village, but we can diversify through OBOP. So OBOP is transformed to be a concept of the local branding. So let me see, uh, let us, uh, let me say that fundamental essence of OBOP, what is that? So to grasp it, uh, let's watch the promotional video of OBOP. So uh, could you play the uh, promotional video of OVO, please? The One Village, One Product Movement or OVOP is a development program that started in Japan. Structured by the government, but led by local residents, OVOP is based on the concept of developing one village by promoting at least one product, where local agricultural products, specialty products, and tourism resources are accepted not just locally, but worldwide. Its basic principles are local yet global, self-reliance and creativity, and human resource development, and its practice extends to many parts of the world. The origins of OVOP date back to 1979 in Oita Prefecture in Japan. Mr. Uchida says, it was triggered by revitalization activities started by young people and women in several rural areas in the prefecture. Seeing this, Mr. Hiramatsu, governor of Oita Prefecture at the time, advocated for the activities to be integrated under the name One Village, One Product Movement. Before long, the OVOP movement in Japan transformed from specialty product branding to local branding, 
where the framework expanded greatly. Integrated communication of history, culture, nature, lifestyle, and the people who live there has maximized local attractiveness. This is, in effect, local branding. Let's take a look at local brands in Japan. Kamikatsu Town in Tokushima Prefecture. Almost 90% of the town is covered by forests, and the town's declining population is aging rapidly. What has saved Kamikatsu Town is a leaf business that cultivates, ships, and sells the leaves and flowers that add flair to Japanese cuisine. It has become a groundbreaking business model by finding value in things thought to have no value, then branding them. Ama Town in the Oki Islands, Shimane Prefecture, made its slogan, Nai Mono wa Nai, which means, if there isn't, there isn't. They aimed at local branding by making the things they don't have themselves. They also introduced an island study system, resulting in a total of 100 new residents per year from returning U-turn and incoming I-turn residents. By emphasizing an experiential type of agritourism, Kanda Town in Guma Prefecture receives many young people from Japan and overseas, engages in human resource development, and information and technical exchange. The local brands in Japan are composed of the three forms, specialty product brands, cultural and environmental brands, and tourism brands. Mr. Ueda says, Uvop occurs in various countries with differing cultures, systems, and conditions. Aligning OVOP with their respective situations requires creativity from the people, including the government and producers. JICA supports this development. Mr. Uchikawa says, in El Salvador, since the first decade of this century when they were engaged in economic recovery after the Civil War, there has been heightened interest in engaging with OVOP at the town and national level. The whole community was involved in building a stage setting for creating and selling local resources under OVOP. As a movement, OVOP is progressing steadily through its various stages. Mr. Homa says, What we have seen is that even without spending much money, if local residents, initiatives, ideas, originality and ingenuity can be utilized, then it is possible to build local brands and promote local industry. What is common all is people. I firmly believe that focusing on people and drawing out the pride and identity of the local people will connect to sustainable local branding. Let's aim at preventing an exodus of migrants through income and employment generation with OVOG. By introducing and utilizing innovation through participation by local youth and returning migrants, let's aim to be the only one leveraging local identity and uniqueness. When local branding is achieved, the community is revived, and what arises is a civic pride that wishes to improve one's own town more actively. The local economy will take a leap forward, public safety will stabilize, and quality of life in the community will improve. We encourage you to get together and discuss what OVOP means to your town. Maybe it is a local brand that will someday be known by people worldwide. The future of OVOP is in your hands. Thank you very much for the attention, but I hope you could grasp and catch the key essence of the OVOP. So, uh, the OVOP is a concept, as I mentioned before, but it has just three principles, like local yet global, self-reliance and creativity, and human resource development. But that is the OVOP, only that concept. So, the, in those principles, the methodology is not defined anything, and clearly because OVOP is just concept. So, that with such flexibility of the concept, of, with that three principles, 
And the catchy name, of course, the one BH one product is very catchy, as well as that uh, the flexibility. OBOP is this mean disseminated to the world, like Asia, Africa, and Latin America, where I'm working now. So it should develop their own methodology with that uh, uh, flexible concept. So now, actually, this is a, a world map where the OBOP is uh, applied. In case of the Asia, uh, starting from the Japan, but there are so this uh, much uh, many country of the dissemination of the uh, OBOP program. Actually, in the world, we have the 30, uh, 30, more than 33 countries which is applying OBOP. And in the in case of the India, uh, in the in case of the India, you have the one district, one product program, as you mentioned. That is good, and that is a good practice. I hope you can get the success. And the alignment of the OBOP for the SDGs, I think the OBOP will contribute to the goal eight of SDGs to promote inclusive, in, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. That is my, uh, my uh, philosophy for the OBOP. So now let me show you some kind of the remarkable case of the identification and innovation for the local resources through OBOP. In case of the, uh, Africa, where I used to work, there is a remarkable case to utilize the uh, local available resource. What is that? This is a symbolic tree of the Africa called the Baobab tree. I don't know whether you know that the Baobab tree or in India, but that is a very symbolic tree in the Africa, and it can grow the fruits called the Baobab, Baobab fruits. Through that uh, Baobab fruits, they can produce or they can process kind of the jam, but they are used to be like this. The appearance or presentation was so uh, very poor, I think. So they could sell it in, in their own community with the very low price. But actually, through the OBOP training or OBOP program, they changed their own product or their, or their uh, presentation as well, like, like this. Because they knew that that was necessary to change their presentation or their uh, identity. And so well, th this is a way to improve their presentation as well as uh, uh, identi identification. So you might say that, ah, JICA injected or the assisted for the uh, financial resources to change or to improve their presentation. But note, she is the producer of this uh, Baobab jam, but she still keeps uh, like a uh, style of the handcraft. She didn't inject or invest huge money, but she still changes their, she, her own creativity, and she still keeps their, uh, her own activity of the handcraft. So they, she doesn't lose uh, her identi identity. But what Jaika do? What Jaika does is just technical assistance for the improvement of the uh, technique or the identification as well as the presentation. So uh, another, uh, another remarkable case in Africa, this is a uh, local available resource. In the street of the Africa, you can encounter this kind of the available resources. What is that? It's cow dung. It's cow dung. Many people say there is no value for the cow dung, but I think there is a value. So one of the young guy in Africa, in Malawi, he tried to change or transform from this cow dung to be variable thing like this. He tried to change or transform this cow dung to the recycled paper with a much value and with identity. So previously there is no value, but now actually he can sell it not only in his town, but also he can export to neighbor's country now with uh, $5 per, per paper. So you see that there are value, but it's behind. We need to find out the resource available, available resource and to transform. In case of the El Salvador, where I'm working now, 
There is a remarkable certified product of the OBOP. There are a lot of things. And oh, Uchikawa-san, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you speak a little bit louder, please? Ah, okay, please. Sure, sure. So you can find some of the uh, product available with uh, utilizing the available local, local resources like this. So, and I show you the kind of the impact for the OBOP, like socio-economic impact. What can do the achievement? What kind of the achievement we can get through the OBOP? You see the economic impact through the OBOP, like economic growth, the sales and the net profit is growing up from 2016 to 2019. And in case of the uh, OBOP, we can find that the return on investment for the government institutions, we can get the profit through the OBOP program. So we can say that OBOP is very profitable for the invest investors or for the uh, producers as well. So and I can show that the uh, impact of the social aspect, like inclusion of the women, youth, and the elderly people. As you see the pictures, there are so many young people youth and the elderly people, as well as the women. You see that the OBOP is very interesting and fun to participate. So that's why there are so many involvement of the women, youth and the elderly. This is a stati a statistics data for the impact of the OBOP. In, ca in case of the El Salvador, uh, we have a much uh, participation of the women and uh, the youth people as well the young people and the elderly people also are participating in the OBO because that is fun. That is fun and interesting and profitable as well. So and we, uh, I can emphasize on the another impact like a transformation of the actors through OBO. The first generation, usually we start OBO with the politicians and the gov uh, government officers like uh, first or main actors like them they are the politicians and the uh, government officer but through watching the achievement of the obop the second second generation will come like those native residents or la native producers to see the achievement of them so there are third generation will come to see that the entrepreneurs emigrated to urban area but they returned to the the same community to show their achievement of OBOP. They are the third generation. They are still young, but uh, uh, they are the third generation. But towards their achievement, there are fourth generation coming. So some of the young people like them, they are not native, but they are immigrant from other area. So they are so passion uh, passionate and uh, still young and dynamics to empower their community. That is a transformation of the gender or the, the generation as well. You can see this kind of the social impact as well through OBOP. So my uh, last uh, presentation is a message from the OBOP. People in community sometimes are accustomed to receive external resources, including financial resources. OBOP does not give it, but will help to generate income. That is a key concept of the OBOP from message of the leader of OBOP committee in El Salvador. So this is my presentation and thank you for the attention. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uchikawa-san, for a very interesting presentation. And I really liked how you connected uh, this effort with your hometown at the beginning as well. So uh, before moving to our next presentation, we have a couple of questions that we have received from the audience. Uh, so uh, Mr. Uchika, if you can uh, take this, I will just uh, read out a question. So there are two questions. Uh, let me start with the first one. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar Garud, who is a student. Uh, his question is, uh, how uh, do the price and the income are managed in the one uh, one village, one product scheme. And how do you get the farmers agree with this uh, price? And I think what he means is, how do you set the price for the products? And how do you divide the income among the farmers? And how you build a consensus? Uh, 
So may I start the answer or let me check the another question or can I start the, the first question? To I answer? think you can start with the first question okay. and then we'll okay. move to other questions. All right. Thank you very much for the first question. That is very interesting and very informative. In case of the OBOP, yes, we have a still the, uh, difficulty to price or make a, a appropriate price because some of the farmers, they don't take any notes or the, uh, they don't know how to account their uh, business. So that's why we usually start to train them about the accounting or the bookkeeping because some of them, they don't take that uh, uh, account note or account book. So they don't know, they don't know how to cost their price or how, how, how to cost their cost of the production. That's why usually we start to train or uh, to make the training about the account, accounting. And uh, of course we need to uh, compare with another conventional product because our overall product is still still costly rather than the, the conventional product or conventional commodities. So our challenge or our uh, remarkable thing is to know, to, to compare with the uh, advantage of our product or advantage of the uh, overall product because we cannot tackle with that conventional product or con conventional commodities because they their cost is slightly low, lower than our over product. But the over product has kind of the advantage of the identity or the uh, not the low price, but the uh, attractiveness of the co uh, the communities or the uh, like the history or like a, uh, value addition. In such case, we can price the product higher than the com conventional product. But we, of, of course, we need to search or study about the, the market price to appropriate the, the uh, market needs. I don't know, I, am I clear for the questions? I think you have answered the questions. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Let me just move to the next question. There's one more question for you. Uh, this Please. is from uh, Mr. Abhijit uh, Mahabatra. Uh, how do the scale of product is managed and how do you mitigate the risk for single product? Yes, uh, usually we should start because some of the village people or the, the countryside people, they don't know their attractiveness or the, the, the uh, resources behind their own, own community. So we need, we need to motivate the people who doesn't know, who don't know what kind of the local available resources is there. So we need to ins uh, motivate to identify or to explore their own resources. And uh, we facilitate them to, to uh, identify. And uh, they also make a decision what kind of the local available resource could be app uh, applicable or could be applied for the OBOP movement. So what we do is just to motivate or to uh, make them in, uh, passionate, passionate to explore their own product. That, that is our role or main role of the OVO program. I don't know wh whether I'm clear. Okay, I think Uchikas on the second question, what uh, he's meaning is how do you um, achieve the economy of scale with the limited I number of products? Mm -hmm. And then uh -huh. if you are dealing with maybe single product, uh, how do you mitigate the risk just working with the single product? That's what uh, the Sorry. Uh -huh. participant thinks. Ah, okay, I got it. Uh, so usually we don't look for the, the huge market for the OBO program for the OBO program because we cannot encourage or we cannot enlarge the, the production levels of the OBO product because our, our producers is very small scale. And I don't, need, I, I don't think it's necessary to enlarge, to make them to the productivity larger. So they can find out the very strategic market like a niche market. So uh, even though the one single product, one single or one identified product can match the one single market or very niche market, 
and with high price, with high value additional product with a high price. That is our strategy for the OVO. I, I don't know, is this clear for my... For my yes, now it's very clear. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. So, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Uchikawa. And uh, I think it's time to move to the next presentation. And I believe uh, Dr. Aikawa is back online. So, uh, Aikawa-san, can you start uh, with your... can you start uh, with your... Uh, Yes, now uh, I'm trying to show my presentation. I'm sorry, I lost the uh, connection, but now I'm okay. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, and uh, can you see the presentation slide? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay, I can start. Okay. Yeah, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jiro Aikawa. Uh, I'm a senior advisor at JICA headquarters, and I'm uh, in charge of the uh, exchange expansion program of this shape approach. And uh, this is my very uh, honor for me uh, to present uh, in this very nice occasion and uh, very great for me. Yeah, so let me start my presentation. Okay, before uh, my extra, uh, explanation about uh, what SHIP is, I'd like to share uh, that some challenges uh, of the conventional agriculture extent. Uh, the first one is the technology transfer. Uh, it's, okay, this SHIP approach is the extent, one of the extension methodology. So that's why I'm going to share the, this challenge. The number one is the technology transfer. Uh, farmers do not adapt the recommended technology or techniques demonstration by demonstrated by agriculture uh, research. So even though the uh, uh, some uh, very nice uh, techniques uh, are introduced by the agriculture extension services, that normally uh, they don't adapt the fully or sometimes they uh, uh, don't introduce the, uh, the, those uh, very nice techniques. So this is what uh, we observed uh, during the uh, period of uh, the Japanese technical cooperation project in the world. Uh, this is honestly speaking. And I visited many countries and I saw many farms in the countries, uh, mostly in Africa and some Asian countries. Uh, I interviewed to them, uh, what is the problem? Uh, mostly they said uh, uh, there is no market. So market, market, market. So uh, uh, the issue of the market uh, is one of the big, big challenge uh, for the agriculture extension service. And the third one is the empowerment. Even though there is very nice market and uh, the, they uh, can access the very nice uh, techniques, but without empowerment of the farmers, farmers uh, the effort to uh, improve the farming do not persist. This is the, uh, the uh, main three challenges which we uh, faced uh, when we introduced some uh, techniques or some agriculture extension service to uh, the farmers, especially the small-scale farmers. As I said, SHAPE is uh, just one of the uh, agriculture extension approach which can uh, contribute uh, to uh, for, uh, solve the, those three uh, uh, basic issues of the uh, agriculture extension. This is the fundamental information to you. Yeah, so uh, the SHEP approach can contribute uh, to solve the, uh, to achieve the three, uh, especially three uh, goals out of the uh, sustainable development goals. The one is the uh, Zero hunger because SEP approach uh, targeting to the uh, small scale farmers uh, to uh, get the better income from fa their farming. And the gen gender equality, uh, gender uh, is one of the uh, very big uh, the component of SEP approach because uh, um, the in many countries.
Uh, it's Carlson, you are actually frozen. There's a bit of network issue. Do you want to ask him to turn off the camera? Okay. Nah. Uh, I, can't, I think it's better that you switch off your video. His microphone is muted. There is some bad issue there. Uh, audience just uh, bear with us. Uh, he's actually joining from the other side of the world and there's a bit of connection issues. Can I ask Vijay to start? Uh, we have a backup person, so, so one second. Okay, okay. Uh, Kitajima-san, would you like to uh, jump in and continue the presentation? Yeah, sure. So, um, okay. but can I share the presentation from my side? Is it possible? Now, I think the yes. Dr. Aiko is joining, but uh, let me share from my side. And then once Dr. Aiko comes back, I will again hand it back to Dr. Aiko. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, do you see me. my presentation? Me. Ah, yes, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Kitajima uh, I think it's better that you yes. continue with the presentation. Okay. Dr. if you, since we are not hearing your voice, um, let me uh, handle the presentation. Let me share the presentation now. Sorry. Uh, this one. Do you see my presentation? Do you see my presentation? Yes, now we can see yes, it. Now we can see it. Okay. So back to the presentation. So Shep also contribute to the sustainable development goals. Um, particularly goal two, zero hunger, which already explained by the Dr. Aikawa, and also goal five, gender equality, and uh, goal eight, the decent work and the economic growth. Um, sorry, my presentation is not moving. Uh, Do you see uh, um, is it moving? Okay, now it's moving. It moving? Okay, now it's moving. Okay. So the uh, expansion of the ship approach has been uh, one of the national commitments of the government of Japan through TICAT process. So TICAT is a Tokyo International Conference on African Development. And uh, the photo shows the, uh, the former prime minister, Mr. Shinzo Abe, addressing on the Japanese government assistance for agricultural development to African countries through the SHIP approach at the opening ceremony of TICAT 5 in 2013. And uh, the JICA has set a wide range of implementation of the SHIP approach to African countries as uh, one of the pillars of agricultural development in Africa. And to date, uh, 312 uh, government officials from 26 African countries have participated in the SHIP approach training courses organized by Japan, uh, by JICA, and then they are active as a major resource person in each country. And about the beneficiaries, in total, uh, more than 21,000 uh, government officials from 26 African countries are, are involved in the SHIP approach and they have benefited uh, over 185 small scale farmers. And currently, the SHIP approach is being introdu uh, introduced in countries other than the, the African region. So SHIP approach training course for Asian and then Latin American countries took place in 2020 last year and then this year, 2021. 
and uh, 64 government officials from 11 Asian countries, including India, participated in the training and the leadership approach. And uh, in the whole world, about 25,000 government officials from 50 countries are involved in the SHIP approach and have benefited approximately 200,000 uh, 200, small-scale farmers. So uh, what is SHIP? So SHIP approach stands for uh, Smallholder Horticulture Empowerment and Promotion Approach. And it was developed in Kenya through a technical cooperation project between JICA and the Ministry of Agriculture of Kenya, which was carried out from 2006 to 2009 for three years. The SHIP approach is an agriculture extension approach that has realized market-oriented agriculture and succeeded in increasing the income of farmers. So how um, does SHIP approach achieve uh, market-oriented agriculture? So essence of our um, unique practice is summarized in these four steps uh, as shown in, in the table. So these steps explain in details on how to plan and uh, implement the SHIP approach. And the activities listed in, in the table here are some examples of a series of activities of the SHIP approach in Kenya and uh, other countries. So the important thing is um, to, to, to encourage each country to customize these activities to better suit their local context. So let's look at some, uh, uh, let's look at the, some activities in each step. So this is the, uh, the photo from the one day installation workshop, which was carried out as an activity in step one. The workshop aims at the sharing the, uh, the purpose and then expected outcomes of the ship activities with the farmers. And the market survey was one of the main activity in step two. The, the purpose of the market survey is to encourage farmers to have um, hands-on experience of understanding how a market operates and also what markets want from them. And then based on the market survey result, farmers select the, the crops, they grow, and then the business plan was made by farmers as an activity in step three. So the, the planning decisions were based on group consensus and uh, various uh, uh, the collective actions to promote efficient production and marketing were discussed and uh, agreed by the farmer group members. And based on the business uh, plan, in-field training was conducted to introduce the skills and uh, the knowledge necessary for the pra practical um, production of the target crops, such as mushroom and okra, uh, selected by the farmers. So what is the, uh, the concept of the SHIP approach? So as you can see from the diagram, the concept of the SHIP approach is underpinned by two pillars, uh, economics and psychology. The, the first pillar on the left is promoting agriculture as a business with the aim of creating an efficient and sustainable local economy by mitigating the asymmetry of uh, market information among all market players, um, including, including farmers and um, market actors. And the second pillar on the right is empowering and motivating people aimed at, um, at uh, raising um, internal motivation to carry out activities continuously under the self-determination theory of uh, psychology. So these um, elements of two pillars uh, um, work in harmony in the activities of the SHIP approach. So uh, asymmetric information between market stakeholders and producers the farmers um, make uh, makes the economy inefficient and also put both of them at uh, disadvantage. So by um, exchanging the information they have, like um, who wants to sell or who wants to purchase or what crop and what quality and quantity and when and where. Um, so sharing this information through the sharing of this information um, information asymmetry can be mitigated and then uh, trust can be built. 
So this is an example of bridging the information gap between mark, uh, farmers and market players. So it was achieved through the, uh, the repeated transactions. And so this is the voices of farmers and traders from the field. So from what this farmer mentioned, uh, farmer worked together as a group to, to produce different types of leafy vegetables to meet the, the needs of traders, which means the needs of uh, the market. And then according to the traders' response here, um, this uh, farmer's arrangement, uh, like a collective, uh, collective production has allowed traders to, to reduce time and the cost of correcting different types of leafy vegetables from field to field. So from this episode, uh, it proved that the importance of creating win-win situation between farmers and market stakeholders through repeated transaction in order to establish a trustworthy uh, farming business. So uh, how the ship to in, uh, incorporate the, the psychological aspect into actual activities. So these are some example of tips used in the shape of activities that meet three psychological needs. The first one is autonomy, so autonomy support. In the, the shape of project activities, farmers themselves decide the crops to grow and make a crop calendar based on the result of the market survey. So um, farmers own their decisions and take uh, responsibility without blaming others. And then the second one is competence support. So the, the skills and techniques provided to farmers are user-friendly and low cost. So farmers can put them into uh, practice immediately after they learned. So farmers are like uh, delighted to, to, to learn new knowledge and skills based on their needs and also accept and use them in farming activities. And the last one is relatedness support. So face-to-face -face communication between farmers and market stakeholders um, benefit to build good relationship. So as I mentioned before, um, farmers understand and practice that the business is built on trust. And uh, through the implementation of the SHIP approach, uh, especially the activities like uh, market survey and crop selections, farmers transform their awareness and behaviors from grow and sell to grow to sell, which resulted in the, in the sustainable increase of, the, of, the, of their income from uh, horticultural crops. So this uh, graph shows the, uh, the average net income of horticultural crops per farmer increased after the implementation of the SHIP approach in Kenya. So with this approach, the, uh, the pilot phase of the SHIP approach in Kenya, which was uh, implemented from 2006 to 2009, achieved the doubling, inco doubling income of about 2,500 small-scale farmers on, in, uh, within two years. So um, income increase have been also reported in not only in Kenya, but also Rwanda and Lesotho and, uh, and Malawi. So this is the, the case of Palestine. The SHIP project uh, improved extension for value-added agricultural EBAP phase two has been uh, implemented since 2016. And the project uh, that project promotes from high yield agriculture to high profit agriculture. So according to the project report, uh, the average net income per farmer increased. And then if you can see, uh, especially the average income of female farmers improved uh, significantly compared to the male farmers. So these uh, outcomes and then impact was it is because the, uh, the relationship between husband and wife has improved through the, uh, the gender mainstreaming training. So as a result, the gender relationship has changed from one farm manager and then one labor to uh, management partners. So now um, they are even sharing the decision and then doing the farming activities together. So um, lastly, I'd like to um, share some information about the current article. Um, these, uh, the Kenya's achievement and impact of the uh, chef approach were analyzed by KEFAS. KEFAS is a forum for agricultural advisory services in Kenya and reported in the Agricultural Human Capital Investment Report published by FAO and IPRI this month. 
So uh, if you are interested in the detail of the, the report, you can download it, the full report from the link listed here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kitajima-san. Thank, uh, thank you for your thank teamwork you with, with, uh, with Dr. Aiba. Uh, at the moment, we don't have any questions for the Shepherd approach, and we are a little behind the time. So what we'll do is we'll just move ahead with the presentations. And in any case, uh, anybody from the audience has a question to, uh, regarding the Shepherd approach, you can still post it on the YouTube chat box. We'll come back to it at the end of the uh, forum. So uh, now I would like to uh, invite Mr. Vijay Vardhan from uh, ITC. He's a general manager of operation uh, at ITC. Um, I will not take too much time introducing you. Uh, Mr. Vardhan, please start. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, just uh, Vijay, just Before Vijay speaks, uh, let me tell you uh, the two presentations by JICA, uh, one on one village, one product, and the other one was SHEP. They are very good presentation and uh, they are very relevant to us because in this country, as Vijay will also tell you in his presentation, that uh, we have the similar issues uh, under one district, one product and both in the case of how to improve the income of through horticulture of the marginal farmer is something which is I think all district magistrates and all agriculture team are kind of, you know, they are focused on it and they need more and more information and experience of other country. So my suggestion to JICA in this case is that you sponsor a training program of uh, officers from aspirational district. We will select, as you are doing for SHEP for many of the uh, countries and in India also last year that you did. But uh, since this is a forum which is primarily for the aspirational district program, I mean, there are many questions that one would like to put to one village, one product, I mean, which cannot be done here at this stage, because somebody need to go and see it. I mean, the question that were asked that how do you maintain their scale? If you do not maintain their scale, then how do you handle the risk if you're only in one product? Then similarly, the other thing that when you look at the horticulture, how do you find the market? It's not so easy. I mean, that is, if the success has been achieved in some places, and that is where, say, for instance, look into the example of Chandoli district in aspirational district. I would suggest JICA team to make a visit to that district. You'll find that they have a they have a product which is black rice, which is very nutritious. The same is black rice is produced also in Manipur in, and in many other part of this country. Now, while these products have great value and the similar products are sold in Delhi or in metropolis of India at a very expensive rate, but to get this kind of product and get this kind of farmer integrated to this market system is not easy. I mean, the, our, our districts have uh, struggled with this particular thing. So there are certain specific questions. Niti, what we can do is that from aspirational district team, we can select uh, some of the officers. Either they must be they, they may be district magistrate or maybe the agriculture worker, agriculture officer. And then make a team and so that there can be interaction with them with both SHEP program and with the one village, one product program, because it rhymes with our one district, one product program very much. Uh, Vijay is a great friend of us and uh, he has been doing some of the great jobs. So Vijay, tell us, how do we benefit from your experience? Is the presentation visible? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, on the onset, I actually thank uh, Niti Aayog for giving us this opportunity uh, to partner with the Niti Aayog's Expression District Program and also to share our experiences today in this uh, India-Japan forum. Uh, so uh, I, am, I represent a corporate, uh, ITC Limited, uh, which uh, by itself is a major agribusiness company. So we have a long-standing relation with farmers more than a century old relation and we have believed in nurturing the uh, sustainable agri value chains which means uh, the uh, it actually helps farmers itc and also the environment uh, it's not a degrading uh, uh, chemical based uh, agriculture it's actually a regenerative agriculture sustainable agri so this has been our background uh, through uh, because of which uh, one of the main reason why niti also has asked us to partner with them in the aspirational districts program. 
So we work uh, with the Niti Aayog uh, in the 27 districts, spread over eight district, uh, eight states. And the uh, overall objective is to actually increase, improve the incomes of uh, rural households, mainly agri, agri households, uh, by uh, reducing the cost and also by improving productivity and all other possible options. What we can do. This was the initial objective, and uh, what we had planned was like ITC will work. Uh, uh, in districts with the district administration to build the capacities uh, of the of, uh, government officials in POP uh, package of practices dissemination to farmers means major agri extension initiative and then ITC will also uh, work on uh, establishing baselines ongoing uh, data collection and uh, an end line to actually assess the impact what has happened and uh, on regular basis the major government schemes and programs we would uh, take up the mapping and uh, assessment uh, surveys in field and also get back to Niti Aayog with any suggestions for improvement. So this is these were the initial uh, responsibilities which ITC had agreed to. But later, once the program started in 2018, we too have learned a lot in this program, more than what we have learned in all these years. Uh, in the aspirational district program, we have learned a lot. So there were many new things also we have brought in. Uh, so, uh, before we go into what we have uh, done, I, uh, Niti Aayog and ITC, so I would like to put the actual issue uh, in uh, two uh, level, uh, two, uh, two phases. One is what is the problem which is to be addressed. The other is where are we heading towards or where should we head towards. So, the problem is uh, uh, in India specifically when we look at agriculture is about small land holding. It is in a range of 1.2 to 1.4. Four hectares on average. Uh, so the data keeps changing, but it more or less it's in the same range and it's not improving at all. It's only coming down. So this lead to low investment capacity and many things get compromised when farmer can't actually uh, have uh, investment capability. The other thing is uh, above 50, 52, 53 percent of the agriculture is rain fed, and even in the irrigation, it is mostly groundwater dependent agriculture apart from uh, the irrigation project. So groundwater is a very volatile and very and not so stable uh, resource itself with the deteriorating groundwater tables. So all these lead to one crop per year and of course crop failures due to not having good uh, water backup, the irrigation backup. And knowledge gap is a major area uh, because farmer has to catch up with the ongoing research and also with the very basic knowledge itself, what universities have uh, recommended uh, even 30 40 years back so all those have to go to farmers so this is impacting their uh, many practices uh, and also the yields and climate change is a new issue which has picked up in last uh, I, I would say more or less in last decade uh, which is increasing the crop failures so broadly these are the issues apart from few, uh, the infrastructure and other uh, gaps uh, which are specific to area to area but uh, at pan india level these are the issues which have to be tackled and then there is a target set by indian uh, government to, to double farmer income and uh, there had been many uh, data points but one of the uh, data point on, from the report uh, on this doubling farmer income so they have set a target around 1.63 lakh means 163000 rupees per annum should be the income from agri and allied sectors so this is the the first red color bar is what it is about and if we actually see uh, what has a, uh, what is the actual situation when we started we got a baseline data collected in all the states where we are working so we see that all the uh, all these districts are lagging behind uh, obviously because the aspiration districts are uh, even more poor poorer as compared to other districts so there is a gap which uh, means we have to reach to this level, whereas currently in uh, 2018, the districts were at this level. So the first one is about problems. The second one is about the target where we should head towards or what we should aim at. So uh, to ensure that uh, the issues are uh, attended and also there is a continuous improvement. Uh, so the point, uh, there need to be a package of practices. It can't be just uh, one or two major things. So all these are actually there, but uh, uh, what we learned over a period of time is it should be a family based saturation based approach by which we can actually bring in all these uh, 
uh, initiatives to each of the family to see the real improvement in their income. Uh, so the uh, actual uh, the aspect is that we should improve income from the current available assets and also we keep on adding new avenues so that the farmers income improves. So the five broad areas where the work should happen is knowledge empowerment, natural resource augmentation, mainly first is water uh, irrigation source followed by soil and biodiversity and then very important diversification both in on farm and off farm institutional support which is about uh, leveraging the government schemes a vast number and very good effective government schemes and programs rolled out they should be leveraged by the maximum people and being part of uh, farmer institutions to actually get the benefit of the uh, what to say collective effort like equipment hire credit and those services and the fifth one is continuous innovations and adding new avenues of income so when this package is actually look uh, there and the farmers are targeted means it with a family based approach they are targeted to see that these things reach to them so we believe as per our experience in especially district we believe there will be significant improvement and we can achieve the doubling income target and this uh, whole work uh, contributes to the sdg indicators 1 2 6 13 and 15 uh, Apart from this, the SDGs of gender uh, equality of SDG 5 and the uh, decent work condition SDG 8, these two should be part and parcel of the whole process. So it's not about contributing, they should be part and parcel of the whole process. So this is where uh, we come from. Uh, means so this is what we have actually designed after understanding the whole district, uh, aspirational district scenario. So one by one, we go, so knowledge empowerment, I will share ITC's work in the aspirational districts, uh, 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 the examples uh, for each of them uh, and what has been the impact. So we worked with uh, the district administration on the knowledge empowerment, farmer training majorly. So what we have done, we trained government in uh, extension uh, uh, methodology or efficient uh, dissemination. So while they know the subject very well, uh, but what we have trained is a better communication material, how to organize the training, how to get farmers and how to train them in phase-wise manner. So we have covered around 15 major crops, both Kharif and Rabi, two crops each. So 15 of them are there in all these districts and uh, livestock related package of practices also. And last year, uh, what has happened earlier, we were doing this through physical mode, but last year, it because of COVID actually it has uh, opened a new avenue like when we could not reach out physically, this uh, digital based mechanism was also thought of and then we had designed again with district help. The WhatsApp was the platform which finally was decided because of the ease of operation and around uh, 6,000 groups covering 5.4 lakh farmers means 540,000 farmers is the reach out in these districts today through which the dissemination of the uh, crop manuals. So this one is the crop manual in all the four regional languages in these states, uh, which goes in a phase-wise manner to farmer along with voice messages. And once these groups were formed, what has uh, happened is means these are all owned by government, not by ITC. So they are government's groups. So government actually what they have done, they use this platform for dissemination of schemes related information which has been a very effective tool and also weather information was also uh, in some of the district, they started actually sending the weather related forecast. So a permanent extension channel is what we could establish physically, yes, but a digital one also has been a very effective one. And a quick survey which we have done last year when we have started also had given us a hope that uh, this confidence that people have actually followed this. It's not just one way thing people have followed they read they understood and they shared with others so this is the uh, work we could do with niti's help in knowledge empowerment and we believe this is the first thing which will actually lead to many improvements knowledge so one quick example uh, this is from bihar uh, so if we see what it happens is like uh, in kharif there used to be maize uh, there was maize the conventional method of cultivation when we have brought in the raised bed planting along with other package of practices there is a improvement in the yield in second season either it was fallow or with broadcasting so here zero tillage conservation agriculture was introduced 
and because of uh, zero tillage moisture remained in soil so they could take the summer pulse crop otherwise uh, people can't take up summer pulse crop because moisture is lost when the plowing is done so what happens round the year engagement has led to an improvement of around uh, means the additional income of 26000 uh, rupees per acre and for the average was around 2.3 acres in that district where we were so the point is it's not just one crop it is actually the round the year engagement that could have that can happen when we work with farmers in improving their income and other aspects so the second one is diversification uh, a very important thing uh, mainly to add income to bring in stability and also to tackle with climate change because uh, agriculture is uh, uh, volatile or more susceptible to climate change and uh, even with crop insurance like scheme but loss is inevitable when there is climate change or other aspects like drought and floods so this is an important uh, aspect uh, people do have uh, diversification but we want to see that every farmer family has this means in field they have trees either commercial or fruit trees and they also have at least one of the livestock or animal related aspect uh, livelihood so cattle goat fishery or apiary mushroom like thing so that there are these additional sources and uh, they actually get benefited uh, and it is more stable that is the more important thing so the examples are from itc's work in these districts especially district districts so up to 40000 per family income uh, increase additional income can happen when uh, these were introduced. So this data is from fishery, what we have done in Assam. And the trees, they can add up to 50,000 per acre uh, when uh, because the income comes as a lump sum. So it is also more uh, convenient for farmers to actually get this income once in a year or once in four or five years when they harvest the trees. So every farmer to have uh, on-farm diversification and off-farm diversification. This is the second element. Third is, of course, irrigation. Natural resource is about water, soil, and biodiversity. Here I'm talking about access to irrigation, which is an important thing. So what irrigation does, first and foremost, there is a second crop, which many of the uh, rain-fed fields, uh, none of the rain-fed fields will have, because they won't have second crop. So with uh, irrigation, you will have second crop, and all the crop uh, loss because of moisture stress will also be uh, avoided uh, avoided when irrigation uh, uh, is actually there so a quick uh, case study from vidisha district uh, one of the district where we work so when 181 farm ponds were done uh, with each farm pond we uh, can irrigate up to five acres so what happened is a thousand acres additional irrigation had actually come up in the village and on average it was 37,000 per family the income increased so the, it's a very simple straight cut thing and uh, in the first uh, speech uh, also means uh, it was uh, shared that uh, this is an area where there need to be more work uh, farm ponds or uh, irrigation uh, structures through mg marriages and uh, we strongly uh, accept it and we are working for promoting for irrigation sources mainly farm pond is a very ideal thing for small farmer because it's within the uh, her or his field and they can access it back for the irrigation source and the fourth one is institutional support. We can look at it in two ways. One is farmer should be member of an institution, farmer group, which is either a PACS, a primary agri cooperative society or a farmer producer organization or custom hiring center, CHC. So what happens with this is farmer will get a backup uh, support because of the collective action, like they procure inputs collectively, they hire out the equipment uh, to all the members at a better rate and in uh, good quality equipments and there is also credit linkages which happen so this is something uh, again we say like every farmer should have this uh, and uh, there is a quick uh, again a case study this is from uh, up uh, so where uh, when uh, the uh, 17 groups were formed in the just first one season uh, they got uh, 105 lakh rupees from government for the equipment support and they hired out to members so they got 4.5 lakh revenue but the important point is uh, for farmers members it was a cost reduction because they got it in fair price and in time so there was around up to 35 percent cost reduction uh, for the farmers uh, because of this equipment hiring so this is something very important government of india is pushing fpos 
we will add that FPOs and CHCs, custom hiring centers are also very effective coordination. Either of them should be there and every farmer should be attached. And the other thing is saturation schemes of government. So saturation means every farmer should have. Then actually they will have financial stability and also social security. So soil health card, Kisan credit card, the loan linkage and the PM crop insurance and the PM Kisan Samman Nidhi, the rupees 6,000 support provided to all farmers. Pension scheme is something uh, we want to actually see that every farmer has. And wherever enams are there, selling through enam. So these are saturation schemes so that every farmer in a village should have. Maximizing all possible, uh, maximizing as per the requirement, micro irrigation, other horticulture schemes, water bodies, animal, uh, uh, artificial insemination and so on. So this should go on. And this graph in the right side, the bottom is actually, we have uh, taken up 50 villages per district as model villages, where we are attempting that all these are reaching out to all families. So then there was a survey done initially, like what is the current reach out? If we see against all these schemes. So the work that is happening now is that the whole gap is covered for all these saturation schemes. That is how we are working in these villages. And this is a very important learning for us. We never earlier before working with Niti Aayog had actually thought of this, but the potential of Indian government and state government schemes is so much. It's only about channelizing and seeing that it reaches to the maximum number of people. That is what we have learned. And the fifth and last one is uh, continuous innovations and new avenues of income. So these are required so that there is an ongoing uh, improvement uh, regularly. Uh, I won't say we have done much work here, but we still have uh, tried. Uh, the, uh, means we are keeping on trying out whatever possible. So in uh, additional avenue, one very important thing again is solar power generation by farmer, not just for their pumps, but actually selling solar power which is part of Indian government's Kusum scheme. And uh, somehow this part is not picked up as compared to the solar pumps, but we want this should happen more. And post harvest value addition, every far, uh, farmers can look at either crop or uh, milk or whatever products. Homestay or village tourism is another important uh, emerging area. At least that was what was presented earlier also by other speakers, but in India it has to pick up mainly by farmers. And uh, survey, they can be, uh, means people can also become service providers for agriculture, livestock. There are cadres like Pashu Saki, Krishi Saki and all. So when they take up that, that's also an additional income for them, uh, apart from agri and allied sectors. Innovations, of course, uh, hydroponics is one, drone-based uh, practices means spray of fertilizer and so on, is, are few of the things. These are ongoing things, but innovations are very important that they should reach to farmers. So some of the um, what we have tried at very local at farmer level is like there is this Thalia tray, which is an Israeli technology. We picked up from Israeli food expo, agri and food expo. So this tray is very suitable in rainfed condition. That's why we tried in Jaisalmer, which is in arid district, desert district. So this captures 100% rainfall uh, and it uh, doesn't allow, uh, means it's zero transpiration, uh, evapotranspiration from the soil uh, evaporation. Uh, so what happens, the whole water is uh, available to the uh, crop and it uh, the survival improves in the plantation, uh, mainly in these harsh conditions. Again, acacia gum, this is also a very uh, applicable thing for such a district like Jaisalmer. They have acacia trees, nothing much comes up except this type of one or two trees. So improving the yield of gum from acacia. So we get them, we got them trained by uh, the Kazri, the local institute in uh, how to improve the gum yield. The other one, uh, because of Indian government's effort also, there, there has been a huge penetration of uh, uh, household sanitation uh, with the double pits mostly. And this should get linked back to agriculture uh, as a resource. And also it's good for environment. Uh, it is about uh, circular economy. So we have initiated this in Maharashtra Nandurbar and now taking to other districts. So try and uh, people and uh, and address their inhibitions to handle this whole thing so that uh, they actually take uh, use this resource and don't uh, allow it to become waste. So they apply the manure back into the soil and they first year itself we have got this data of around 33% cost reduction. So this is I 
uh, we feel that is an important area India should look at considering the population and also that India imports uh, uh, phosphorus and potash based nutrients. So these are some of the innovations we have tried, but the main point is that it's an important area that should continuously keep happening. And then I would conclude that uh, parallel and multiple interventions are required uh, so that we reduce the risk and we ensure continuous improvement. Uh, so farmers' current assets, the small assets, or whatever they have, we should maximize the uh, potential of those assets, uh, land or, or livestock, and we keep on adding the avenues, new avenues. And uh, sectoral planning, which had, which is now going on in districts, we are working with district administration. So it has more or less this component, but uh, this language has to be brought in that family-based saturation approach. So sectoral planning has to be tuned accordingly and it is happening like wherever we are there, district administration takes our feedback also and this is happening well. And family based targeting will give better results as I had mentioned. So saturation approach should be targeted and PM Kisan Samman Nidhi actually has uh, apart from providing the financial support has created a very good master list uh, database. Uh, which we can consider as the base document for saturation because earlier we didn't have such a document also. So this is another experience we got. So this is these are the experiences and the our what I uh, say our uh, uh, means of the learning from the Vijay, uh, Vijay thanks. Um, thank you sir. very much. I think it's a very beautiful presentation and I have something more to do with you. Uh, we will be discussing it offline. It's a beautiful sir. presentation sir. and I think you showcase the approach of Niti Aayog that uh, the best impact is if you work with government scheme. If you work with district teams and with the district administration headed by district my state, that's the best impact of any program. If you can stand on the ground and find out that what exactly, in what way I can tweak the program that it can help many people and that is what the ITC experience is telling us. Uh, we are very short of time. Uh, I would not, uh, we initially wanted to kind of stop for a while, but I will not. And uh, we can Sir, come to... There is a, uh, one question from the... Question audience. we can answer. Okay, fine. Let, let's ask the question, but we are very short of time. So let's just tell the question. Just tell the Okay, question. just uh, one question. Uh, this is from Mr. Abhijit Mahapatra. Uh, Mr. Bardhan, you have uh, mentioned about this uh, uh, saturation mode and it requires convergence between agencies working in the same geography. So the question is, uh, can you explain how ITC is co-working with the other organization, especially in Nandurba and uh, Gadachiroi uh, in Maharashtra? So Gadachiroi is not part of the 27 districts, Nandurba is. What we do is we work with the district administration, agri department and allied sector departments and KVK. So these are the agencies with whom we work. Knowledge we source from the agri institutes. So these are the stakeholders who work with us and farmer institutions. So all these people are brought together. Uh, there's no structured way of uh, leveraging other private players in this particular program, but whatever comes as a requirement, we pick up from private players also. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So that is fine. Uh, uh, we come to, is uh, someone from agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture there on this? Uh, is Alaknanda there? Is she there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So, yes, I can hear you. So, over to you, madam. There is, uh, it's a brief uh, panel discussion uh, on which uh, uh, the whole idea is that, yes, we know that there are the best practices. What government of India and state and district can do together that these are better adopted in the state. So we have uh, two uh, persons. One is DM Siddharth Nagar is uh, unable to come because uh, of the visit of the uh, chief minister there. So we have uh, DM of Simdega, Mr. Susan Gaurav and Mr. Dr. A.V. Bhavani Sankar from Nabar. So over to you, we need, you are around uh, 25, 30 minutes time, 20, 20 minutes time? 25, yes, 30. and uh, uh, our colleague, uh, Dr. Umesh Babu, who facilitated the panel discussion, so I think uh, we can ask him to take over. So ma'am, uh, over to you. Umesh, shall I come in?
hello yes go ahead please yeah start. yeah 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 uh, thank you uh, uh Yvishan, and dr Thomas Prabhu here a facilitator of, for this panel discussion uh, leaping on uh, leaping forward how to implement best practices in aspirational districts in the panel uh, we have already explained we have three uh, distinguished panel members from government of india and apart uh, so uh, let me introduce uh, before we begin the talk let me introduce uh, Madam Alakananda Dayal, uh, Madam from Joint Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Farmers and Farmers Welfare, Government of India. Uh, Madam has a lot of best experiences in designing many developmental schemes and programs in agriculture sectors in India. And uh, the second panelist, uh, uh, Dr. A.V. Bhavani Shekhar, uh, General Manager from NABAR. Uh, sir is also working in NABAR since 1996 and has a lot of experience in natural resource management uh, programs, farmer producer organizations and institutional development, uh, rural credit cooperatives, and investment credit in agriculture. And th our third panelist, Susan, Sri Sushant Gaurav, uh, DM Shindaga Jarkhand, uh, with a focus on natural resource management. Sir has utilized his power and uh, resources to bring reforms in agriculture practices by introducing many innovative and advanced practices in Shindaga district that have been replicated in several other districts of Jarkhand, which have also brought uh, recognition and national forum uh, and now uh, so i welcome you all for this session uh, as per the panel objectives each of the distinguished panel members will provide their valuable inputs views guiding points as to how the concepts learnings particularly from japan can be contextualized to india while design, designing innovative schemes and programs in agriculture sector now over to madam alakananda dayal for your experts opinion and inputs Morning to you all my colleagues. I think it has been a wonderful uh, morning today with all those uh, good informations coming in and I must thank Niti Ayu for organizing this. And sir, I must also say that this program, very program, of course, everybody knows, but this very program of aspirational districts, I think it's a great effort and, you know, uh, pulling up these districts up to the national level and using a lot of things. And in fact, I think the program has gone much ahead uh, in uh, not only achieving the objective of pulling these districts up, but also introducing some of the very good techniques and innovations that have been brought out by these districts to be disseminated among other districts in the country also. So it's not only about the aspirational districts coming up, but there are a lot of good things which have come up out of this program also. Of course, all my colleagues have given some very wonderful information since morning today. And um, I think there have been very good concepts which have been there. So a couple of things only, I think everybody knows how Government of India is going about things, but a couple of things I would like to highlight uh, among them, and we'll go about as we just you know, uh, proceed with uh, all of this. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure everybody must be knowing, all my colleagues from JICA and Government and my other colleagues also, that Government of India uh, said that we are on a mission to double the farmers' income. And in that context, we have used a lot of schemes, a lot of work is being done, of course, Agriculture, as uh, we know, is one of the uh, one of the largest professions in, in, in India, and a lot of population is involved in this. And therefore, we need to do a lot of work in this sector so that you know the India as a whole comes up. Unless we pull the sector up, uh, I think it will be difficult uh, for us as a country to come up. So, in that direction, Government of India also has been uh, working very hard. And of course, pulling up aspirational districts and an important part of that. Uh, there are a lot of been uh, programs and things which are going on for doubling of farmers' income and a lot of other you know development activities that will take place in agriculture. Uh, saturation drives is one of them, as my ITC colleague had said uh, before this. Saturation drives are another very important part that the government has taken up now. In fact, um, I'm sure the the district level officers, if they are attached here or people who know about the districts know very well that there are a lot of gaps which are there. Government of India is there as a lot of government schemes and a support for as an institutional support, as, 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 as my colleagues have said, and even an overpowering support for every citizen of India. There are a lot of schemes which the government have introduced in every sector of agriculture. Let that be natural resources, it may be for irrigation, it may be for credit. Credit is one of the very important part. I'm sure Nabad uh, representative may will add on to that. Credit is a very, very important part because unless you have good finances, it's difficult to get on to other things also. 
there are a number of other schemes in terms of crops, horticulture, marketing, and everything. Uh, there is a particular scheme for uh, um, in, in the marketing sector, I would like to say for the mandis and other things, because that is one of the foremost things that the farmers must know, because after all, when they have the producers, they must sell it at a good price also. Apart from the techniques, because if you want to do that, if you want to raise the level of living and their, uh, double their income, that's one of the very important parts. So that's, you know, uh, we're trying to connect them through ENAM. We're trying to connect all the mandis also and getting the marketing reforms, which when which have been the one of the main agendas for government of India also. We have introduced some of the marketing reforms and we are hoping that this will go through a major way in, uh, in this sector uh, upwards. JICA, I heard they were uh, uh, saying about their two schemes, that is the one village and one product. And I would like to add on to that, that uh, government of India has this uh, big scheme of one district, one product which is now uh, coming up and in, in, the, in the same way, the, we, are, we are trying to say that uh, the districts have a couple of products which are very unique to the districts and we would like to show those products to the world and we would like to uh, have those districts come up majorly in those products so that, you know, they become, uh, they become the flag holders for those products in their districts. So that is one scheme that is already there uh, on the government side. And um, the other concept also, of course, uh, uh, I think has been done in the many projects which JICA has done for uh, the government and in collaboration with the government in the many districts. So I've been given a list of JICA projects which are there. And uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, projects which are happening. There's one Himachal Pradesh Agriculture Crop Diversification Project, which is happening in uh, Himachal. Andhra Pradesh has an irrigation and livelihood improvement project. Charkhand has a horticulture project. Rajasthan has a water sector livelihood improvement and irrigation project. And there are a number of projects for dairy and development and, uh, and, and a lot of other sectors also. So I think JICA has been doing a lot of good work. And I think there are a lot of learnings coming from the JICA uh, initiatives that have been taken. I'm also very happy to see that the private sector, uh, of course, ITC has given a presentation here and ITC has come a major way for that. And a lot of other private uh, companies and public sector companies are also coming up in a major way in this sector. I really do think that there's a lot of need for uh, extension activities uh, in India today. Why? Because a lot of things which are going on a very fast pace in the world, there are a lot of things which are there in India, there are a lot of techniques, scientific things. The other wing of Ministry of Agriculture, the DARE, um, the, they do the research on this. They try to disseminate the information and knowledge through their KBKs and other things. And um, since NDC Sindega is there, I'm sure you must be taking advantage of the KBKs and the ATMA activities which happen there. Government is doing a large bit through uh, these extension workers, through KBKs and ATMA activities to disseminate these lot of information. But uh, despite that, I do think there's a huge, huge scope for doing all that because we need uh, the awareness to be taken to our farmers in a big way. Howsoever, we may feel connected to them through, through other uh, tech technological uh, activities, telephones, uh, videos, or whatever things. But I think there is nothing that can replace a personal kind of a training and you know the outreach to the farmers, which can give them a lot of knowledge and information about how they're doing things. Come what may, whatever we may think, but uh, the ruler India still needs a lot of awareness, still needs a lot of connectivity, still needs a lot of communication and outreach to be done to them. And uh, of course, uh, we do that uh, as part of our government initiatives, all the government staff and machinery and everyone is there. But I think it will go a long way for all the private people also and the organizations collaborate with us and partner with us to do that bit in reaching out to them. Because after all, it's the human entrepreneurship which will come up at the end. This is all what we are doing as a support to the human spirit that has to come up together one day. And therefore, we want the Indian farmer to come up on its own with all these supports. And he or she should be aware of what's happening. And he and she should be able to make a very conscious choice about what he wants to do and what uh, choices he has before us in terms of not only farming, but in terms of other uh, support networks, in terms of other uh, non-farming incomes also, because they also go a lot of way. And it's not only the farmer which contributes to the income of the family and therefore to the income to the nation, but all his family members also. And we see family uh, as a collective, 
and uh, pharma collectors we are also trying to encourage them um, seeing that family as a collective also we have a scheme for the uh, for these pharma groups to marketing and uh, we have a lot of other infrastructure uh, schemes also which are done through collectives and through institutional networks of course nabard is doing a lot of it on the infrastructure uh, agriculture infra fund and a lot of other organizations institutional organizations credit organizations are doing their bit for that so i think we need to go a long way in doing that and i would really appreciate and uh, the efforts of all the private organizations and ask them also to come forward and all of us so together we need to take all this sector thank you sir for the time and uh, i think uh, with all our efforts i think uh, we are going to make this sector come up big in a in a good way that is helpful for uh, the participants of this group farmers and the country as a well. whole thanks uh, madam thank you very uh, thank you so much for your talk and uh, your points on uh, how to bring the existing schemes into the farmers level for the betterment of the farmers and agriculture sectors are really helpful for us uh, now we'll move on to the uh, next uh, presenters, Dr. Uh, A.V. Bhavani Shankar, for your thoughts and input. Uh, sir, your uh, uh, mic is... Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, thanks, Dr. Bumesh. Uh, uh, excellent presentations uh, uh, so far and a lot many uh, learnings. Uh, and, and it's always interesting to uh, listen to ITC uh, for the wide range of services they have they are rendering uh, for the farmers. Uh, now, from the relevance point of view of these uh, models, SHEP are, I mean, one village, one product uh, uh, programs of uh, JICA in various countries. Yes, pretty much relevant to India for few important reasons. Most, I mean, the most important being the uh, extent of small farmers we have. Nearly 86% of the statistics say that translates it to around 112 uh, million uh, small farmer uh, holdings. And the second reason is the climate impact. Uh, one of the speaker was talking about, we are amongst the most vulnerable uh, countries from the climate point of view. And obviously when a country is vulnerable, uh, a country which is dependent on agriculture, uh, these small farmers are uh, livelihoods are at stake. And third important thing I would say is it's one of the best opportune time because the policy environment as Madam, as the Joint Secretary has already told, the policy environment is so very conducive. So many programs are coming up and it's right time and the policy is absorbing and giving scope for very many uh, interventions, innovations, etc. Now, on uh, the adoption of uh, the models into our Indian context, I would first say the first step would be the I mean, something like a stock taking of the models in the country. There are models which are developed in the country. There are several many models. There are models developed by technology institutes, developed by developmental agencies like NABAD, and the farmers themselves. So many models are uh, involved. I mean, I understand that ICR has developed over more than more than 50 integrated farming systems through their research network one model which strikes me immediately is the one which nabad had uh, promoted over the past 20 or 25 years is the wadi model which is which is what a small farmer horticulture empowerment would mean wherein we have supported over 800 projects we have supported in which we have supported these are implemented in the uh, poorest of the poor regions like with the tribal uh, communities where they are supported for half acre or one acre for plantation of horticulture crops for sustainable uh, income income sources wherein we plant one or two species of the crops and a plant boundary plantation etc we also do soil water soil conservation water resource development works and this has proved a very successful uh, model I would suggest if JICA or NITI can study these models, which are prevalent across the uh, country. Now, uh, while there are models, there is a need to operationalize these models at the ground level, for which I feel an institutional mechanism is required at the ground level. And here is the role for the farmer producer organizations. Government has initiated a very Government of India has initiated a very positive step in announcing and starting the implementation of the center sector scheme 
on FPOs, formal producers organizations. These formal producer organizations will certainly give the mass or the volume for the farmers produce and the voice for the farmer in the market. And NABAD also has experience of uh, uh, promoting over 4,000 FPOs. Notwithstanding our experience uh, in FPOs, uh, we had pretty good experience and at some places we also had hits taken. But notwithstanding all these this, when we are working with farmer producer organizations, uh, it opens up more models to come. Like, for example, I would say, since we are talking about a model which is relevant to horticulture, uh, I would say uh, we all understand that fruits and vegetables are very perishable. And then when an FPO comes, it will have the wherewithal to do little processing. I don't say high-end uh, processing into new products but a simple primary processing, like a sorting, grading, cleaning, or weighing kind of a thing or a packing. That would itself, as many empirical studies have shown, that that would itself add price addition of at least 20 to 25%. And this primary processing equipment, it doesn't cost really great. It may cost around 10 lakh, which is available as grant support from various government of India schemes. Take it, National Horticulture Board schemes, or take it from MID has the mission for integrated development of horticulture. Uh, so, so, I mean, I would uh, uh, call it as a, I mean, I would call it as a mini supply chain model of uh, development. I mean, I am just, it strikes me that it is a mini uh, supply chain model. Uh, while we have experience, we have provided some business development assistance for the FPOs to try this. We did have some good success. I mean, it is at the initial stages of experimentation at our own and now uh, from the uh, presentations that are made what strikes me immediately is the process orientation of that has taken place in this uh, particular program whether it is shgp or ovop ovop uh, the process they are process rich and that is what which we need to imbibe into our uh, programs uh, like the community participation the decision making at the community level, the decision of the community to choose their own products, the local knowledge, this requires to be paid full attention. And another factor that we can bring in from the uh, from these programs is there seems to be some kind of a decentralized decentralized uh, what you call trainings and capacity buildings. I mean, given the size of our country and the divergence of the agro uh climatic conditions and the divergence of the crops and the activities that the farmers take place there should be a decentralized uh training framework or a capacity building framework or you may call sensitization uh framework where we nurture so very many local resource persons then the message will uh go thick and fast another important point i would say many of the successes which we have and we have achieved is because the support that we get from the district administration, particularly the agriculture department, horticulture department, and animal husbandry uh, departments. I mean, we owe many, I mean, a lot of uh, uh, our successes uh, uh, to them because in our programs, a lot of integration. In fact, with ITC, we do several many programs at the ground level, the corporate collaboration, the, in, the collaboration that happens at the ground level. For example, Vijay Vardhan was talking about the farm ponds. In many of the tribal projects, Wadi models, which I have mentioned earlier, the government has come forward to support us with uh, uh, farm ponds to their own uh, schemes. So this is a kind of collaboration that is also required. Okay, so I mean, my learning or my suggestion for uh, from these two uh, presentations, these three presentations that have come, one, certainly on the processes, second, on the uh, training framework that has to uh, come, and thirdly, the uh, kind of uh, collaboration that requires to come, that is happening, but requires to come from the uh, uh, state governments to their district administration. So these are few thoughts that I uh, have based on the presentations that I have heard for the last uh, uh, two hours or so. So thank you very much. Thanks for uh, inviting Navad on the panel. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shankar. Uh, let me just jump in. I think our facilitator, Dr. Umesh Babu, he's 
connection has just dropped. We have a lot of trouble today with the um, technologies. Anyway, uh, Dr. Shankar, thank you so much for your observation. And as we are pushing the time, let me move on to the next panelist and invite uh, Mr. Sushant Gora to give your comments uh, about today's presentation and how we can take this forward. Thank Please. you so much. Good afternoon. Uh, in fact, I have to uh, say that the concept of SHEP and OVOP is very much relevant to the uh, local conditions of uh, India. However, uh, what is needed is a detailed pre-implementation work, such as crop calendar preparation and on-field on training and demonstration before jumping on to these things uh, as it is, uh, which have been started in Japan and then in Africa. We have to do this thing. And for this, we need KBK and Atma to be strengthened both in the capacity part, uh, that is man as well as material part. They must have a human resource who is well trained to the 2022 scenario. Then uh, when they have been recruited in 1980s, so we have to update them according to the scenario and as per the demand of the India Department. and uh, technologies. The second part is uh, initially it must be implemented on a cluster based approach because it will enhance the risk taking capacity of the group as a whole to this new uh, approach as well as a higher bargaining capacity uh, so that they can tackle with the and they can talk to the market in a more strong way that uh, they should not have to reduce their price while selling their new products for, for example, a particular product for a particular village. And that is why I'm saying it is not an individual farmer based. It has to be a, a cluster based approach, both for SHEP and OVOP. And we have an example of uh, this same uh, SHEP uh, through Coal India CSR. We have started in the Bas Bahar uh, project, where is, uh, wherein we have uh, gone for a high value crop production. And we have seen the implementation and the benefit of that, but we have implemented on a cluster-based approach. At the same time, we would like to say that it must be supplemented by a variety of innovative simultaneous interventions. Uh, we know uh, it is very tough to ask uh, that already we are going for implementation in SHEP and OVOP, but until and unless people there who are already engaged in various types of activities such as fishing, such as sericulture, such as non-timber forest produce, handicraft such as bamboo art, clay art, or animal husbandry, then they have a capacity of risk taking so that if even if this product fails, we have a backup economy uh, in sericulture or bamboo art or animal husbandry. So this must be supplemented by variety of other interventions and fundings. And lastly, that I have seen why Pradhan has been successful, Pradhan is an agency which is successful in Jharkhand, is because wherever they go, they go with a implementation of five year plan, not a just one year plan, we choose some farmers and then we implement them. No, they, they choose a cluster, they choose a district, they stay there for five years, they hold, they handhold them for a minimum of five years continuously and then by the time they get mature, they then move to the new areas. Now, I would show a small uh, photo which shows uh, the, the, the basic successful implementation of a project in Simdega. Very basic thing, this is just another, this part is a, a solar based lift irrigation. There are two types of implementation that we have taken up. One is solar based lift irrigation from the uh, surface water. And the another one is a ground water based is uh, uh, solar based lift uh, uh, ground boring, boring based uh, surface irrigation. So uh, there are few advantages of this. We have seen the, uh, the prices of the diesel and petrol are going up. So the input cost goes down to a large extent. Second, there is a continuous irrigation facility in a dry uh, area such as Simdega, which only gets uh, rain fed agriculture practices for the farmers. Third, it creates a scenario whereby we can produce uh, uh, even sugarcane in the areas where are 
uh, we are we are leaving out two types of uh, agriculture practices only they are go for only one time that is paddy so we have transformed from the single uh, time agriculture to a three time agriculture base so there is a higher cropping intensity in a large area at the same time since now they are producing three times uh, in the same uh, limited farmlands so they are going for crop diversification even if we are going them and telling them of various advantage only if uh, we can show that you are going for a three times agriculture then only they are putting up risk for only one or twice uh, for that year and we have been talking to them they they say that uh, we will accept your technology if we are assured of our paddy cultivation and then the rest uh, is a bonus part for us that is why we are going for your uh, technologies third is uh, we are integrating with other projects such as creation of ponds doba and uh, fish cultivation dakri and uh, the border line of those farms we are creating uh, neem or uh, uh, guava which is suitable for acidic soil in simdega so uh, efficient natural resource management is one of the core project of this and the last is what we are seeing is disposable income as mr swaminathan has always said the farmers must increase their disposable that is all the uh, um, uh, income that they are getting after reduction all their basic uh, expenditure the disposable income must be increased and we are seeing uh, that uh, it is increasing by around 50 to 100% Now, uh, what other schemes that we have taken up, uh, such as transformation of KVK, SCA fund that we are getting from the Niti Aayog has been helpful in these type of projects because KVK is a very separate agency and they are unable to get such funds. So we have taken up because that is the core point from where we can show the uh, agriculture practices. And if, if the JICA fund can be diverted from the national level to the all transformation of KVK, the point will be uh, will be a very foundation uh, place to ensure that whatever uh, these projects are uh, trying to achieve in a short time that kvk will transfer them to the farmers in a uh, within a year or two years next we have uh, created a high value paddy cultivation uh, uh, and mini rice mill also ntfp processing space and machines so NTFP, uh, when we are we have gone uh, for the NTFP non-timber forest produce, such as in uh, tribal areas like Simdega, uh, we have learned that three things are very critical to hold uh, this agriculture and non-agriculture practices. First is procurement, second is processing, and third is marketing. No single agency can go for all the three things or two things. One has to be for the procurement part, second is for processing and storage, and the third is for marketing. We have JSLPS who, has, who are getting a good amount of JICA funding, but the implementation uh, stops right in the processing part. They are unable to go for a marketing space. That is why uh, the project is not getting as much uh, output that as it was required to uh, achieve. Uh, at the same time, uh, we must request everybody to go for a revolution to evolution based uh, agriculture. Uh, there is enough of uh, output based green and blue and other evolution. What is needed is an organic and bio based evolution so that it can sustain in the long run. For five years, the output of organic based agriculture is relatively low, but it sustains in the long run, not uh, as we have seen in the Punjab in a green, uh, which became a gray revolution. Uh, and the last thing that what uh, aspirational districts uh, need is uh, funding such as JICA. Uh, we have we have been uh, getting funds in a, uh, for a good performance in a JICA fund for uh, around three crore, which we have distributed for sericulture 1.4 crore and uh, fish culture or PC culture uh, of 1.6 crore. We have we are creating three cage culture in three different reservoirs, which have created a good substantial income. For example, if we take an example of a case culture uh, fishing practice, a single fish seed cost around 1.8 rupees. And when it is uh, after eight months, it, it is becoming a size. For example, Pengasius fish, it, it, it is selling in the market uh, for around 150 rupees. So we are seeing around 100 times benefit uh, in a short span of eight months. 
no business can ensure such a good output. So uh, people must be made aware of such benefits, such technologies. Uh, but but the thing is, uh, there is critical fund uh, uh, fund crunch which uh, may have to make sure to such districts and such people. Only then we can achieve such targets. And uh, I'm very hopeful that SHEP and OHOP, which is very relevant, relevant to the India, uh, uh, to our uh, districts, uh, will help in the long run to achieve the target of uh, farming as a very uh, useful practice and a respectable one also. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing with us about what you're doing in Shimdega and also throwing some ideas about how maybe we can work together um, with the Niti Ayog and JICA. Um, we are a little bit pushing time, and I know there are some comments and questions in uh, in YouTube uh, chat box, but they are not uh, necessarily directly related to uh, the panel discussion or the presentations uh, uh, made earlier. So what we are going to do is we'll just move on to the closing session, and after the closing remarks uh, by uh, JICA Chief Representative, uh, we'll be sharing the screen with our contact details. Uh, if you have a specific questions uh, related to the presentations today or the, to the panelists, uh, you can write to us and we'll get back to you. So now, uh, without any more further delay, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mitsunori Saito, uh, the Chief Representative of JICA India Office. And I have a, um, I'm personally uh, delighted uh, to have Mr. Saito here. To have Mr. I've worked Saito with here. them uh, about I've 10 years ago. Uh, we are really happy to have you back, sir. Happy to have you back, sir. Saito-san, please. Please. Thank you very much, Oni san. Uh, I hope you, you are doing well. And uh, uh, thank you very much for, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Saito -san, for being your video with is us. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm not allowed to turn on video uh, on my uh, in my system. No, I can't. Okay, we are not able to okay, do that. So we are not able to do that. Right. Uh, so well, let, let me continue. And okay. Okay, sir. Uh, so thank you very much for being with us, uh, taking uh, your precious time. Uh, today's seminar was uh, uh, the first edition of the series of seminars uh, for India, headed by Niti Ayog and the Japan. Uh, uh, kind of represented by Japan uh, to share experiences and lessons learned and uh, ongoing initiatives uh, toward achieving sustainable development goals, SDGs uh, in India, well, uh, even uh, all over the world. Uh, today, uh, uh, I, though I have to apologize for bad connections, uh, but anyway, uh, from JICA's side, uh, out, outlines of JICA's flagship initiatives, uh, like One Village, One Product, or Smallholder Horticulture Empowerment Promotion, uh, were represented. Uh, those are, uh, uh, roughly speaking, all about how to connect rural people to the market. Uh, the market could be a let's say district uh, uh, district capital or a metro big cities uh, it could be the world market and there are these uh, initiatives uh, fully uh, relying on uh, people's potential uh, but people's potential cannot be realized by uh, itself uh, as you are fully aware uh, people can develop or improve their products, sell them in the market, and realize a better life only by appropriately uh, building capacity and providing infrastructure, and finally uh, overcoming the knowledge gap. And also, uh, uh, well-coordinated action, convergence of action among different departments, different government scheme uh, for those aspects are required. Uh, so uh, even in uh, other countries, the successful cases of 
uh, one village, one product, a small hold, uh, uh, a small hold culture employment. A uh, successful case is was all, uh, always accompanied uh, by uh, concerted uh, actions uh, from the side of government, uh, whether it's central or uh, local governments. Uh, from that con uh, on that con uh, uh, viewpoint, uh, today uh, through the discussions with the uh, distinguished guests and uh, through the presentation from uh, uh, Niti Ayog and uh, uh, other uh, stakeholders, uh, we were able to uh, uh, get uh, reconfirm that the uh, uh, government of India and the uh, uh, relevant stakeholders uh, making uh, tremendous, uh, wonderful uh, efforts uh, as to how to, you know, accompany uh, uh, people's uh, agriculture's or small uh, vulnerable people's actions uh, toward a uh, better uh, betterment of their livelihood. And, uh, uh, yes, government is uh, uh, taking bold and very uh, stretched, widespread actions uh, for that uh, purpose. Uh, but also, uh, government and we are facing uh, different challenges and uh, uh, different uh, big shortage uh, of uh, input, whether in terms of uh, financial input, uh, whether in terms of capacity or institutional uh, supports. So uh, there is are still a long way to go uh, to uh, overcome those uh, uh, gaps, uh, those uh, uh, hurdles, and to finally uh, realize uh, better uh, production and a better livelihood of uh, hundreds of uh, agricultural people, uh, rural people uh, living in this uh, country. Uh, anyway, uh, different input, different insights, uh, suggestions uh, demonstrated uh, through today's uh, discussion uh, must be quite useful uh, for each of us, uh, government decision makers, uh, practitioners on the ground, and uh, uh, finances like JICA, uh, let us uh, keep on discussion uh, as, to, as to how to, uh, again, uh, converse, um, uh, uh, beautiful convergence uh to uh for for uh clubbing you know these uh, suggestions uh to uh, uh improve uh, the ongoing actions and initiative and uh, uh bring about a better result uh in the future uh as uh, presented by honorable chief minister uh modi uh, at the uh, General Assembly of the United Nations in this uh, September. Uh, India uh, occupies a big uh, proportion of uh, poor population or vulnerable uh, population in the world. So, uh, as the Prime Minister says, uh, if India grows, the world uh, also grows. Uh, if India realizes uh, SDGs, uh, world will be almost, you know, have realized uh, most of uh, the targets. Uh, for this uh, big and beautiful goals, uh, we would like to uh, concert our efforts and, and uh, continue a discussion uh, for that. Uh, so again, thank you very much for uh, to, uh, your presence, your participation, your uh, patience uh, for this uh, per, uh, workshop.
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Saito. Um, hopefully, we can see you next time in the uh, next fi uh, final forum. And uh, thank you to all the audience. And uh, thank you to and, all the audience. Uh, and, uh, the panelists, uh, we are very sorry that we have uh, gone over the time. And just for the last announcement, uh, you can see the uh, QR code and link for today's uh, forum feedback. You can visit these links and give us a feedback. And alternatively, uh, if you have any additional questions or uh, comments to make, uh, you can contact us uh, in the emails shown on the right side of the slide. So um, that's all for the day. And thank you all for coming today. Thank you.